Thank you, everyone, for listening to Soul Talk with host Jeremy McDonald, the author of Peace Be Still. You can check out more about our shows or about Jeremy at soultalkradio.org and jeremymcdonald.net. And now for our show. Hello, hello, everybody, and thank you for listening to Soul Talk. Uh, we got a great guest coming on today. It's uh, He's a been on the show a few times, actually, uh, Dr. Joe Gallenberger. Uh, he is a manifestation expert uh, with uh, several you know, decades of wisdom uh, in creating your dreams and uh, quick and effective uh, ways of doing that. Uh, he was on the show, actually, uh, probably about a year, uh, well, about a year or so, a year and a half ago or so, about his uh, CD, uh, meditation CD, Liquid Luck. And uh, uh, we had, I've actually used this CD before and had a uh, great uh um, you know, I've got some great results with it as well. So, with all the the great feedback he uh, he got from that, he actually wrote a book, uh, like a para, like a, um, a companion book to the CD uh, called Liquid Luck: The Good Fortune Handbook. So, we're going to bring uh, Dr. Gallenberger on the on the line, and uh, he we're going to hear uh, uh, from him in his wisdom. So, uh, just bear with me one second, and we'll bring him on the line. Hello, Dr. Gallenberger. How are you? Hi there. How are you doing, Jeremy? I'm good. I'm good. How is the? I'm sure it's pretty cold up in in North Carolina right now. Are you yeah, in? Are we you went at home down to zero this week, and uh, we're getting flurries again. We're about mid twenties now, so for us all, that's cold. Yeah. <laughs> well, it was in the twenties here, and so when I when I thought you know when it's in the twenties in Florida, we're probably in trouble. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So I've been reading through uh, uh, the Good Luck Handbook, and I, or Good Fortune Handbook, sorry, and it's actually uh, quite eye-opening. It's, it, I love your your method of doing things about gratitude, being in the heart, and through the heart, you know, we create uh, luck for ourselves. Um, for the listeners, I know you've been on uh, a few times, but could you talk a little bit about PK so that they understand uh, what psychokinesis is and uh, before we kind of get into the book and the stories? Uh, sure, I'd be glad to, Jeremy. Uh, psychokinesis and telekinesis are two words for the same thing, and that would be to affect physical matter reality with your intent through your mind and then your energy. Uh, so uh, examples of that would be that are studied are uh, rolling dice and patterns, uh, f- affecting random number generators, those kind of things we can do in scientific lab, but also folks use it for bending metal and plastic with uh, their energy, growing seeds in their hands. Sometimes we get root growth about an inch and a half in uh, just two or three minutes, uh, lighting light bulbs without plugging them into the wall, uh, energy healing area, comes in and um, uh, because random number generators are affected you can also affect slot machines which is helpful to me in my Vegas adventure workshops Uh, and that same energy of psychokinesis is really the same energy we use when we do manifesting creating what we'd like in our life Uh, but with psychokinesis uh, often the feedback is uh, very quick and very clear so it's a good way to learn or train into being able to create what would you like in your reality easier. Because um, in real life, you know, you could uh, be thinking negatively for weeks before maybe you got a cold or thinking positively for a good while and nothing seems to be happening. Uh, with PK tasks, you usually know within a minute or two uh, whether you're sending the right energy and you're being effective. So we use it for mainly for training uh, so people can do more healing work and more manifesting work. Does that help? Absolutely. Absolutely it does. Thank you so much. So I was actually going, I think one of my favorite stories in here is the the gentleman, I believe he was a gentleman, that uh, he'd been, it had been a while since he'd worn a pair of socks. And he had done the uh, Liquid Lux CD, I guess the night before or that morning. And when he was getting ready to go walk his dog, he pulled out this pair of socks that he hadn't worn in a very, very long time and out fell, I believe, five $20 bills. And I thought to myself, how often have we, you know, stashed money away or that's happened or what a great surprise. And it just opened up his paradigm to this, um, 
to this yeah. money that he had, and I think he talked about his pension was coming in the next day and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, so well, as a woman, and she right, it was her pension day was coming up, so she was really short on cash. She was an elderly woman, <clears throat> so finding that a hundred dollars in the socks uh, was uh, like money for heaven for her. So uh, yeah, we've had folks. Uh, Find money, uh, have uh, win lottery uh, scratch tickets, a thousand dollars one week and a thousand the next. Uh, <clears throat> um, people sell houses uh, in uh, in an hour after listing to Liquid Luck after they've been on the market for months, just languishing with no buyers. Uh, folks giving uh, the one lady this week called and she had uh, was reading the book and. Uh, she'd been out of work for a good while, and and by the time she got about a third of the way into the book, she got four job interviews. So, um, nice things are happening. When you think, because uh, I, I hear a lot of stuff in our in our in, in the spiritual community, and one of the things that they say uh, is they they talk about the term, these terms, divine right order, uh, divine timing, and divine order, which I guess is powerful. Um, and it seems to me that we create our our divine right order, and you know, and, and a lot of that that could be a limiting thought um, that blocks us. You know, and we're mm-hmm. of course there's lessons and things and blocks that we we work through. But it, you're giving even ac- actually after every story, you're giving part uh, of the actual meditation and the reasons. You know, and, and, and some tips in here of why it worked. And why, what it's doing for your mind and your psychic, or your psych, your energy and your the psychology behind it a little bit. Do you think sometimes we create these catchphrases? Um, I think you even talk about this: no pain, no gain, and stuff like that. And it's it's our own limiting beliefs that you know we keep on saying we cycle over and over again to keep us from having this happy, abundant life. Yeah, I think it's a free choice. Universe is a very wonderful universe that would like to give us what we want. And uh, but <clears throat> within our freedom, if we fill our mind with no pain, no gain, then it's going to give us pain before gain, uh, because that's how we believe it needs to be created. Um, so beliefs become very important, um, and we work on those to expand them. But probably one of the keys, um, there's many chapters in Liquid Luck, the Good Fortune Handbook, on things that we find are important on an emotional basis. Uh, such as feeling great abundance, love, compassion, which gets us out of ego and more broadens our view to everyone, not just ourselves. Um, Feeling lucky, which in our culture is not uh, really uh, applauded because, you know, somebody worked real hard for years and then somebody said, oh, you've just been lucky, that's kind of an insult. So we look at all of that to really raise a very high emotional state um, filled with love, praise, good fortune, those kind of feelings. And what that does is tend to soften the left brain, the mind, the ego, and gets us out of all those limiting beliefs without having to attack each one individually uh, because it moves us more into a whole brain state and then into our heart energy. And when we do that, then we can transcend <clears throat> all that mental garbage, if you want, that might be limiting us and being in the way. You actually. Uh, so, what do you think? I mean, is it our culture that creates our limiting beliefs, or is it our our parents, or is it a combination of everything? I mean, and it's interesting because you actually talk about, you know, um, the preamble of our our nation and about how life, liberty, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. You know, that it's right in our constitution that. Um, you know, it's built in there for us to live freely and stuff like that. And so uh, in this country of abundance, where do you think that we lost that abundant light, that abundant, or is it just a, um, a human function that we've created? Or I think, you, you know, you mentioned is? culture is definitely there. <clears throat> the culture tries to convince us we lack, you know, if we lack... Uh, uh, being able to contact God directly, we have to go to informal churches and maybe tithe in order to find Him or her or whatever. Uh, the uh, you know the people say you need education or you'll lack the ability to have a job, and so all these systems are built around lack. Then you have, as you mentioned, the family, each tribal family, if you will, 
comes from different experience going through the Depression and World War II or being in some other situation. Then you have your own experiences. So, um, you know, an example I use is uh, that I just make up is if I asked a pretty girl out when I was 15 and uh, would you like to go out with me? And uh, she stiffens and reddens and says no and walks away. I'm going to make an assumption she didn't like me. What really went on is she liked me a lot, and she asked her dad that night if she could date, and he said, you can't date until you're a year older. But now I got a belief, and the next girl I go up to, you know, months later, I might be timing off, uh, sweating under the arms, and say something like, you wouldn't want to go out with me, would you, in front of her cool friends, and get shot down the second time. So the universe isn't doing that to us, but we can make conclusions that would say, um, attractive girls don't like me in this situation. And that can go on a lifetime unless we have the tools to get the insight about what's going on and then to remove that and get back to uh, the state that I think the universe would really like us to be in, which is feeling abundant and joyful uh, and compassionate and filling ourselves to overflowing with that and then blessing others with it. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, Because I think when it's good for us, it's good for other folks as well. You know, you can make a lot of money stepping on the backs of others. I've met a few people that did that. But the folks I know that are abundant in money plus health plus relationships plus all the important parts of life, they tend to be very open, loving, generous people with very positive attitudes. And those attitudes are there before the success. You know, when I go out in Vegas, I see that very often, you know, the person is in a good, positive mood before they hit the slot machine jackpot or roll a beautiful roll on dice, not just after, you know. Uh, so you see them in the casino and they uh, are beaming and they, you know, oh, did you win? Yeah. And, and the person that doesn't know them might assume they're happy right now because they won. But if you track them, they were happy before they won. You know, you bring up a really kind of a, a good uh, subject when when you're talking about the the young man that asks a pretty girl out when she's young or when he, when he's young and then a month later you know he's starting to create this um i guess they call it a self-fulfilling prophecy you know after yeah. the one girl's rejected him he just assumes that everybody else is going to reject him and and so uh, until he changes that paradigm that's been created um you know later on by choice or whatever whatever he does um, and you mentioned that, that that goes on for a lifetime, <laughs> you know, could go it on can. for a lifetime. It can. So yeah. how would the, uh, they change their their language? Because that's really, to me, like a language that's going on in their mind that says, "Pretty girls don't like me." Yes. Um, and so, and then they probably even go into relationships that are unhealthy, uh, that have really nothing to do with pretty girls. They just go for what what is there. Uh, instead of what is what is in flow or works for them, uh, how would they change that language? I guess. Or well, the first step again would probably be needing to have awareness enough to not feel victim. To instead uh, adopt responsibility for what's going on in your life, seeing yourself as a creator, and say, "Okay, what in me is creating this uh, this pattern?" You know, given I'm a pretty nice guy and la 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 la. And uh, so the awareness would be there first. Uh, then we have, um, if you can get the person to go in the deep meditative state, which we can do easily with the Monroe uh, Hemisync and the Bionaural Beats on Liquid Luck. So in 10 minutes, we get in a deep meditative state. At that point, you can talk to all of yourself, your unconscious mind, your higher self, uh, even the quantum energy in every cell. <clears throat> and there... You can set a new pattern uh, quite quite easily, um, and so in this there might be an exercise first to very actively get rid of any residual feelings of lack, guilt, uh, resentment, fear. Uh, once feeling kind of clear of that, then putting out a new positive, very uh, clear and positive image, much like the secret would then come in and be correct to say, visualize what you would really like now under and what they don't say is under this wonderful new energy that you have in deep meditation, that's a real key. So if a person then in that uh, did that, my guess is uh, uh, quite quickly, usually what will happen is the universe will put situations in front of them where they would have the opportunity to learn 
new things about in our example pretty girls um so you know one might come along and be quite friendly to the person and they would have a choice to either just sort of put their head down and walk away because they're afraid of rejection or take a chance and uh, if they've done their patterning well um, it's likely that that relationship it might not be the soulmate of a lifetime but would be very pleasant and help begin heal through experience any concerns about um, their likability uh, so it's uh, awareness first then uh, have really good tools to shed any of the past loops of thought or emotion and then third uh, really raise energy high uh, and put in a brand new pattern that the universe can then start forming around bringing new experiences in that new pattern absolutely that's that's a, that's a, thank you Thank you for those tips. I know there is many people out there that, um, you know, they they read the books that, you know, you're writing, and you know they they get a lot of tips, and then they they they're stuck, or they they look at positive thinking, um, and then they, you know, something that you know the positive thinking they're doing, the things are doing going great, and then something gets thrown in their uh, their path that they've co-created. Um, and then they stumble, and then they go back, and oh, this isn't working. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, and uh, and so then they they give up and and go back into their old patterns. And uh, do you think that those stumbling blocks are really just there to practice and get even stronger? And, and as you they go there to help you shed away more layers, I guess so to speak, until you you get you know stronger in the understanding that I'm creating this universe. I can change it through my thoughts and, and change it through how my programs are uh, changing my programs. Do you think that those blocks are put there for that reason to help us grow? Um, yeah, I would be, you know, I, I think that probably more than 90% of them are our own creation rather than some spirit guide or something putting them there. Um, because we, you know, it's basically almost a uh, math. Uh, if you had, say, um, 80% fear about something and 20% desire for a positive outcome, you're probably going to manifest the fear. If you get to uh, 60% uh, positive energy and 40% fear, it might come towards you slowly and with lots of glitches. That would be a very natural state to be in the first time you try these things because you don't, you know, you hope it will work, but you're not sure. And when you get to a place of uh, confidence where you have 80 or 90 percent desire and clarity and only 10 percent of fear floating in the background then things tend to come fast and even come in better ways than you imagined um and all that i think can occur without anybody quote doing it to us um you know that said if you ask the universe i would really like small lessons i'll pay attention but i really want to learn about how i'm a creator in my own world um, probably some things will be put before you where you'll have that split second where you can go into either fear or heart and you'll see different outcomes. And it can be trial and error, uh, and eventually you do it the right way and you get some reinforcement and then you start to lean that direction. I try to make it very easy for people to contact me. I try to answer emails I get. You know, I'm pretty busy, but I, I do that, phone calls. And, you know, with Liquid Luck, Good Fortune Handbook, that book and the CD combo, um, Liquid Luck CD with it, I, I get all these amazing stories each week. But I do get a handful that come in as I tried it and, it, and things seem even worse. Um, and uh, usually we can, within just even an email, tweak that to say, oh, what are you thinking? And it turns out that they have suspicion about being powerful or or afraid that if something goes good for a while, the other shoe will fall and balance it out with bad, or um, they've been taught that uh, hard work is the only way to get something, luck is uh, suspect. Or, and so if we can identify a key thought, often we'll, we can break that. But if the person doesn't tell anybody and just tries it on their own once or twice and then it doesn't work or whatever, and the, yeah, they could get discouraged, put it on the shelf and go back. Usually in those situations, I think it's change is always a little uncomfortable. It involves the unknown. You know, when I ask, uh, do spoon bending with people in class, the first thing they'll say is, I'm afraid I'll be the only one that can't do it. 
underneath that will be I'm afraid I will be able to do it because if I do, then my whole view of reality changes. My own power and responsibility in my life changes. So it may be that person that puts it on the shelf is not just quite ready yet uh, to um, challenge the beliefs that allow them to stay in victimhood, uh, allow them to feel that they're quite powerless um, and change to a different point of view. And, you know, so we lovingly, compassionately respect that, but it's nice to give people an option. Um, and the idea that, hmm, this is something new and, you know, less than 20 bucks for the book or the CD, I can try this. Just that hope can um, uh, get them going again where maybe they've become discouraged. Yeah. So I just wanted to... um to back up real quick to, to something, yeah. um, I'm pretty obviously we have pattern in something that's actually something that you mentioned in in the book as well. When you're actually talking about, uh, you're a little bit dismayed about the psychological community. I mean, being a, a you know a psychologist yourself, and, and, and you're, I think what you're trying to say is, you know, we focus a lot on the depression and the anxieties and you know, I, I guess what, the, what's wrong with people as opposed to the positive or the happiness uh, that we could uh, get people to focus their attention on. Um, so how, I mean, is that kind of what it's gone, because not everybody goes to a therapist or a psychologist. Sure. Uh, you, uh, kind of along the, uh, the lines of what we're talking about, the community or the culture is focused in on what's wrong as opposed to uh, what is correct or what is right. Um, and so we we're we're kind of built that way, and it's a survival instinct too. You know, we will pay attention more to pain than pleasure usually. Uh, sometimes when people say they're playing tennis and they have a bad shot, <clears throat> they'll think about that all day and mull over it versus a good shot and what went right. And they probably right. get further if they focused on what went right and how they accomplished that, how they created that. Um, psychologists. Uh, you know, had focused a lot because of the initial medical model on when there's dysfunction, disease, uh, distress. Uh, now there is a big area we call positive psychology, and not so much focusing on just uh, the good, but why do people thrive? Uh, you know, and, and many people thrive in environments where other people haven't, you know, bad upbringings, etc. And then they begin to see you know, certain essentials, like if there's one person in their life can be a gym teacher or something who treated them with respect, uh, how huge that is in an environment where the, everything else is going poorly, uh, we would learn a lot of, you know, that we can maybe not give everybody iPods and uh, perfect parents who hug us and tell us that we love each other every day and all that, but we can provide some uh supports for the natural healing ability to people to coalesce around. Um, and then those those things are uh, can be amazingly simple. You know, uh, there's many times where just an act of kindness from a fairly uh, not unknown stranger can keep a person from going from contemplating suicide to giving it uh, another chance and passing on some positivity of themselves. So, uh, I know that's a long answer to your question, but um, I, I do think, you know, you can't, you, you, you know, you lose somebody through death, you can't suppress those emotions. You need to express them, but then uh, move on and, and not stay in victim or not stay in feelings of loss uh, particularly long. Um, or grief has its own uh, pathway, but sometimes people get stuck in in more of the powerless loop kind of thing. And in fact, when we study grief, one of the reasons everything seems dead, dull, boring, uh, dimmed down is the person's closing their heart off to protect from another hurt uh, versus opening their heart, feeling the grief, how much they really love that person, feeling the loss. But then the beauty of nature is there for them. Other people are more accessible, and they move through the grief more quickly. Uh, so much of what we consider unpleasant is just our own, again, actions to try to shut our hearts down to protect ourselves. Yeah, absolutely. So, Dr. Gamber, we have a caller, and I would like to um, bring them on the line if you don't mind. Uh, sure, really that'd be quick. fine. 
Hello, caller from a 727 area code. Uh, how are you? I am extremely well. How are you? I'm wonderful. Did you have a, a question or a comment for Dr. Gallenberger? I, I've been listening. I didn't have a particular um, comment or question. Okay, well, wonderful. I, I can, I, if you're listening, that's totally wonderful. I just saw you there, and I wanted to uh, bring you on, and just in case you had a question or concern or a comment. <laughs> I'm glad you're so. listening. I, I, uh, I hope you have a wonderful day. Huh? I thank you thank so you. much. Sure. The, um, a couple of things that you you've said have certainly resonated in terms of. Um, it seems that at every thought we are consistently choosing love or fear, yes? I would uh, agree with that statement. Uh, Not always consciously, but that's our choices. Uh, Some people think hate is the opposite of love. I think it's love has no opposite, but fear can cloud love. So I have a phrase right on uh, a sign over my desk here where I'm sitting. It says, fear is expensive, love is priceless, choose wisely. Um, that, That, I think, is our choice all the time. Well, that was worth the price of waiting. Good. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you so much for calling in. Yes. Thank really you. Appreciate it. Right. Bye-bye. So I was, the, the, one of my other favorite stories in here is the four-leaf clover story. Uh. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I kind of relate to that because when I was a kid, I was always looking for a four-leaf clover. Uh, and I okay. thought about that story, and this person's 70 years old, and they, after the, you listen to the Liquid Luck uh, CD, they, they find the this four-leaf clover. And I thought it was interesting because it's, it's almost like the Liquid Luck just opened their perspective to see it. Maybe the four-leaf clover was there before, but they didn't see it necessarily. Mm-hmm. And now it just opened up, to, opened up into their paradigm. And, and they weren't even necessarily looking. It just happened to be there. <laughs> Yes, sometimes we get it when we don't struggle. But yes, this woman wrote in and she said, I, I'm over 70 and I've looked for a four-leaf clover on three different continents my whole life and never found one. And then um, after listening to Liquid Luck, I think the next day she went out and she found one and, and in her head, her mom, who had deceased, uh, her mom was singing, I'm looking over a four-leaf clover that I overlooked before. And I think a lot of times that's the way it is in our lives, where uh, uh, the goodnesses and blessings are there, um, but in our anxiety and protectiveness and whatever, we haven't seen them. And if you can just trigger something that allows a person to let go of some of the fear and relax and stuff, all of a sudden they go, oh, you know, I've been lonely all my life and my next door neighbor could become a best friend. You know, you also bring up some stuff that I think is very cool because you bring in a, um, uh, songs, you know, to relate to things. Like I think the one is about uh, you take the song "Row, Row, Row Your Boat" and yeah. you change and you change that to uh, you know uh, about with money and money. Uh, you know, I can't. Remember, I have to go back in the. You book want me to that, sing that on the air? I can do it for you. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> it's uh, uh, the this let people who are very abundant uh, and very nice couple gave me permission to use their song and they make songs up to uh, words to common songs that everybody knows and to row row your boat they said money is only energy comes easily to me i love money and money loves me i create it endlessly and just singing that it's a kind of like an affirmation it tends to change your energy so we sing that when we're going uh, to the tables in vegas just for fun and it seems to be effective. Yeah. Well, and then How did I do just, singing? I don't usually do that. You did a great job. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Now I'm going to remember it. I'll start singing it myself. So, and I, when I read that, I was like, wow, that is so cool, because you could t- you could change a lot of jingles into something fun. Yeah. And, uh, and, you know, I found that the affirmations sometimes they uh, are wonderful, and I flood, I try to, you know, I try to flood my thoughts um, with more positive stuff as opposed to, especially in the times where my mind wants to go to the other area. You know, uh-huh. like when you mentioned fear is a, 
fear is costly, you know, love is priceless, or, you know, what you, know, mm-hmm. you choose, you know, the, what's on your desk. Um, and uh, I try to, uh, you know, when my mind wants to go into the fear, I try to flood it with positive thoughts, you know, to change that paradigm or yeah. that neuron pattern that is wanting to go into the negative. Mm-hmm. And, uh, but the songs would be a lot more fun. <laughs> yeah, it can be... They can uh, they engage your inner child and your right brain because music's on the right side and uh, help uh, open your heart and you know again if the fears are formidable sometimes we just have to sit down and really look at those uh, and maybe with pencil and paper and you know say uh, Doc said gee we're going to do a biopsy we won't know results till Monday it would be pretty normal to uh, feel some fear about that and and maybe singing a jingle may not totally do it. Uh, but we might sit down and uh, really call to mind that we are um, beings beyond our bodies, um, that we uh, uh, can rely on spiritual and other kinds of support, and whatever happens, uh, we're going to be okay. Uh, And by the end of talking to ourselves that way, we're in much less fear about the Monday news that we might get, uh, whether it is positive or negative. That's, that's definitely powerful, and and and, and so it, it's like I think I, there's an old. I remember uh, watching Louise Hay once, and she was talking about affirmations, um, mm-hmm. and the person said exactly what we were talking about, saying, you know, it just really doesn't always work for me. And she says, well, how many days, times a day, does your thoughts go into negative? Mm-hmm. In comparison to the how many times a day does your thoughts go into positive? Mm-hmm. And I think it's like it's almost like your body is like this glass. Uh, of water, and if you fill it with um, positive water, much like what uh, Dr. Emoto tells us about, you know, the love crystals and all that kind of stuff, if you fill it with loving waters, eventually it's going to overflow. And uh, but if it's, I think you even say in here that one of the good things is that if you're 90% happy, you're still in a good place. <laughs> yes, yeah, you know? to be uh, perfect. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I really enjoy the. Um, uh, I really enjoyed the book because it's a good companion to the the CD. Um, for those that are listening, uh, you know, this uh, Dr. Gallenberger is a, uh, a practitioner of the Monroe Institute, and uh, he's come up with a, um, uh, a process called Sync, Crea- Sync Creations, uh, or, uh, that is similar to HemiSync, I would imagine, but it's slightly different. If, I, if I'm Yes, if I have a real beat technology, but it's not under their brand name. I've done some meditation exercises with them. The course Sync Creation, S Y N C C R E A T I O N that you mentioned, is uh, one of those. But Liquid Luck uses the same kind of binaural beat patterns, uh, but not under the trained name Heavy Sync. Um, and they probably would like to know the only place to get that basically is on my website. Sync creation will get you there, but it's hard to uh, spell and remember. So I often, on the radio, also mention liquidluckbook.com will get you to my main website. So liquidluckbook.com. And actually, if you Google at this point, Liquid Luck or Joe Gallenberger or any of that stuff, this will all pop up. Yeah, you're the you're the top of the, the Google. Uh, if you go on Google and type in your name, you're the, you come up on the top, so... Yeah, <laughs> it won't be very hard to find you. And 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 his website is in the uh, description as well. There's a hyperlink to where you can just click right on it and find all of his, um, you know, uh, offerings. I guess would be the best way with his CDs and books, and stuff like that. And he also has sure. a a bunch of cool stuff on there just to read and get your mind into uh, uh, a good state. And, and one of them, my favorites, that I've mentioned probably on every show, is the Abundance uh, Tree. Um, yeah. Uh, yes, yeah, so uh, there is, uh, um, if you go on um, and at uh, the bottom of the page, there's a previous articles tab. If you hit that, you'll see lots of tips for energy healing, for doing psychokinesis work, for manifesting, uh, and there will be uh, uh, some experiential exercises you can do. So there's quite a bit of free, helpful information on the site as well as uh, under the products tab all the uh, kinds of uh, CDs and stuff we're talking about, workshops that are coming up, those kind of things. 
So where are you guys? You're in North Carolina. You're you're home in North Carolina right now. But where yeah. are you guys going from? Are there any trips that's coming? Oh, up? Oh, we were in Hawaii for ten days. That was beautiful, and uh, nice weather. We just got back from uh, Vegas a few days ago, and um, uh, my next workshop I think will be back at Vegas, and then up at Monroe Institute. I'm a trainer there, and I. Um, do about five workshops, no, ten workshops a year with them. So I I travel quite a bit, but uh, right now I'm kind of happy because we'll be mostly home for the next three months, and I have a newborn baby granddaughter as of a few weeks ago, so we're enjoying spending time with her. Congratulations. Definitely Thank congratulations. you. So, and I, um, so I, I will tell that everybody that real quick before we go on is that um, uh, Dr. Gellenberger is very approachable. So if you uh, 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 read his book or read his material or just have a question after the show, I mean, uh, he is, uh, there is a contact tab on his uh, website as well. And uh, out of a lot of the authors that I've interviewed, he is probably one of the most approachable, um, even, even with your busy schedule. So I, I just thought that I'd, I'd throw that out there. That, well, thank you. you know, you're very, I, we try, um, try to be that way and... Uh, because uh, you know, sometimes this stuff is uh, all the way to highly important. You know, where, where somebody's very discouraged. Other times, uh, uh, it's just fun to hear all the good stuff that happens. And so, we we do answer um, when people are right, at least to tell them um, what might be able to be helpful. And uh, and I find that very satisfying to do. I think one should spread it around, right? So one of the things I thought was really cool, and I never even thought about this, and uh, well, I have I've done something similar to it, but I think that the listeners uh, would enjoy this, is the gratitude letter that you're um, that you write. Uh, uh-huh. I believe you said once a month or once a week, and I, I actually what I've been doing is that when I go into the grocery store line, I'll make sure I say a very open-hearted hello, how are you doing, uh, and when I leave, say. You know, you have a wonderful evening, uh, and engage the person that works there. Or at a, you know, I stop at Dunkin' Donuts for my coffee in the morning. You know, I do. I try to do that as well. And but this is an extra step. You know, and sending a gratitude letter to, you know, a company or or or, or an organization. Um, how yeah, have I you just, got uh, a good example? I use in the book is uh, we have we're in the country, so somebody comes picks up our garbage garbage service and. They've done a good job over the years, you know, not, not very neat and doesn't don't throw trash around and they're on time. And so I wrote a letter to the, to the company and just thanked them. Uh, uh, and and uh, knowing that that kind of thing usually then would be passed around among the people at the company, I said, you know, I know everybody there has to be working efficiently, secretarial and management, et cetera, for this to run so smoothly uh, over these years. And, um, you know, I don't know, it took me maybe five minutes to write it. Um, and you send it either by email nowadays. Um, and um, good things happen from that, both inside yourself but for the other folks, too. We can all use yeah. an attaboy, you know. Absolutely, because they hear all the negative all day long, um, mm-hmm. a lot of times. Yeah, I and imagine people then, usually call them and say, you've missed my garbage, not thanks for picking it up. <laughs> so they probably hear 90% of the time when things go wrong. Absolutely. Thanks for picking up my garbage. That's <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, that, you know, in that, I think you make a very important point. I think I, I learned a long time ago the way that the brain works. I think it's the limbic system is that if I'm giving somebody a hug, my brain doesn't know that I'm giving somebody a hug. It just knows I'm expressing love, you know, or, or I'm expressing, ple- I'm feeling pleasure from that that embrace. And uh, so, as we're giving gratitude, the brain probably doesn't know the difference. That part of our brain probably doesn't know the difference that I'm expressing gratitude to a company. I'm just have gratitude, and yeah. I think that that that's uh, that's really profound and changing our how we see the world. As yes. To, so. It's uh. And, you know, we, again, don't want to make this sound uh, too pie in the sky because uh, life can be very tough on this planet. And you could have had a string of experiences that both cause sorrow and fear. Uh, but what uh, my main point within that is that we are creators. We can turn that around, and there are tools now that really can work for this. And 
Um, it's kind of almost like an example I use sometimes would be if I were trying to jump over a door, I could try my whole life. I wouldn't be able to jump six feet over the door. But if I settled back and looked across the room and there was a pole vault there and maybe a kind person to help me learn how to use it, within that afternoon I could vault over the door with the pole vault. So it's a lot of times a question of tools. And so uh, the the biggest error you can make is to feel like, well, uh, there's no hope. You know, Instead it's, well, I don't have the right tools yet. And then uh, let me go see if I can find out where I can get the right tools. And with that, we can do pretty much anything most of the time. Do you think that sometimes we're really attached, and when we're when we set a goal or where we want to do something, we're very attached to the outcome as opposed to the process to get there? And you know, and and an example of manifestation, you know, and I was just thinking about this the other day. um, You know, when you're watching. Listen to interviews like this, or um, where you're watching Oprah's, you know, master classes or whatever. I've found that the ones that we watch and, and read their books, that the, one of the key things they say is this: I don't really know how I got here. I just I set my intention and I worked hard, and all of a sudden, just things started happening. You know, and some people would call that flow, um, or you know, whatever you wanted to refer to it as. Um, and I find that you know, the ones that are not getting the results that they would like, they have an expectation of how the end result, and they're at that end result at all times, you know, so they're that because they're constantly disappointed or whatnot. And I would, just an example of this is that um, I was doing that with my own show. I was looking at the listeners and always kind of paying attention to the archive listens and worrying about all that. And probably about two years ago, I finally just said, whatever, you know, whatever it is, it'll be, you know, I'm going to work hard and I'm going to do what I'm supposed to and, you know, you know, interview people. And an example of, is two two year interviews that are on, on YouTube just in the last two months. I just happened to glance at it. One jumped up 500 listens. The other one jumped up 1,500 listens. And mm-hmm. so I was like, uh, wow. <laughs> yeah. So, and, so I just Well, I, I guess the way I'd, I'd look at this is um... – First, get out of fear, uh, move into your heart, raise your energy high, and then put out a very vivid idea in your best idea and dream what success would look like if that's with your health or show or whatever it is. And then let go and say, this or something better, and really have that trust in the universe to take you there uh, or someplace better and on the long the way give you many opportunities and gifts for friendship and other things that maybe weren't directly related to that goal, uh, that it's a huge abundance flow to you and in all ways it would be good for you and other people. That type of attitude tends to free you up from being too uh, uh, stiff and targeted just to the result and lets you enjoy the journey and lets the journey then take you to magical places. Um, so there's a there's a fine balance. Some people go, well, you know, I'll just live and let live with my own life and let the universe take care of me. Um, you know, in in Monroe where I teach, a lot of times people come in and say, I've uh, I've gotten rid of all expectations. I come this week expecting nothing uh, because they were told, you know, don't push too hard toward a goal. Well, if they hold that, expect nothing too strongly, then what they'll get is nothing. Uh, so the, it's a difference between being willful. It has to happen this way and this time, the way my ego says it has to happen, and being willing. And in willingness, it's like holding your hand in a cup and getting water in your hand to drink. And willful is trying to grab water out of the faucet, and you can't grab water. Um, does that make sense? It does. It does, yeah. absolutely. There's a, there's a balance, or mm-hmm. as you say, a fine line. <laughs> so desire is a rocket of growth and a wide open hope like you had as a kid uh, around the holiday or your birthday. Very powerful energies uh, versus, the, you know, the uh, Eastern folks often talk about detachment as the way to get through the pain on this planet. I would say, you know, have the paradox here is you have great... Um, passion for what you want to do and all, but then you do let go 
uh, into a surrender place knowing this or something better and I'm okay no matter what happens. And so that allows you not to be just detached but very actively engaged but not uh, uh, too preoccupied with outcome, as you would put it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I went through a series of time where I was just, I'm very detached. And, uh, you know, and um, my life was didn't have a lot of drama or anything like that, but it also didn't have a whole lot going on. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then when I started actually, but I still had dreams, so there was still a discord there. And mm-hmm. and so that I just wasn't paying attention to, and I looked at it as I needed to be detached from mm-hmm. that dream. And so when then I started pursuing it, you know, lo and behold, things started happening. But I wasn't attached necessarily to the outcome, but I was still or attached to the outcome. And it just it just changed the paradigm a little bit to say, hey, you know, it's okay to have want things. It's okay to desire them. Just don't beat yourself up about the whole outcome. You know, and, mm-hmm. and enjoy the enjoy the experience to get there. So, yeah. So it's uh, yeah. This uh, uh, backing up is uh, you know to let the universe do its uh, wonderful thing when your energy is right <clears throat> is just just incredible. I've just had a uh, I think about a twenty five year synchronicity. Somebody uh, I met that long ago uh, in training them at Monroe Institute didn't hear from him since and I was going out last week to Vegas and I was also going to take a one day trip side trip to LA to look at these really fancy stereo speakers and meet the designer and I mentioned him in my book because he used, has used liquid luck and, and successfully and so he sent me a letter uh, with his name in it uh, and most of the stories in the book I just put people's initials but he really wanted his name in so I'm sitting at 3 in the morning because I can't sleep too excited and say, what would I like to do? So I went to his website about these speakers. And while I'm there, I get a call on Skype, which I don't use much, from this guy 25 years ago that I haven't talked to, who's on page, I don't know, 110 of my book, and says, oh, you see Albert von Schweikert. Uh, you know him. I met him. He's the guy that does the speakers. I well, say, coincidentally, I'm going to meet him tomorrow for the first time. And uh turns out the guy... Uh, it was fun. I was in my pajamas here in the cold, and I hit the Skype call. He was in India, and bright, sunny palm trees kind of environment, and he owns the highest-end stereo store in Zurich, and so he liked to carry Albert speakers. So there's all this wrapping around that you couldn't plan it if you wanted to, <laughs> uh, of synchronicities and being in the right place at the right time. And uh, when you begin to live from that kind of love and trust energy that's in liquid luck, um, life gets like that. You, you're not all terribly surprised by these kind of calls because they come in pretty hap- pretty often. And uh, yeah. so now, well, you can now that Albert's <laughs> introduced to him, and I'm going to get a new pair of Albert speakers, and everybody's happy. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of funny when you think about it because you can actually stop and say you can't make this stuff up. It's just yeah. there's just so many things, wonderful stories that happen, and you just that you just stop and go, that just happened. Yeah. <laughs> um, there's another cool um, uh, thing that you bring to light in here about the Lord's Prayer that we often recite. And matter of fact, churches I go and speak at, uh, they all they sing it. And you mentioned this is more like a series of affirmations. Um, yeah. So that's a different way of thinking about it. Um, yes, for, it's, uh, for most where we say in the traditional translation, "Give us this day our daily bread, forgive us our trespasses." It seems uh, the Aramaic translation I've seen, which is supposed to be language Jesus spoke, says more: "You give us us our day, you give us our daily bread, you forgive us." Um, it's an assertion of the uh, love and, and caring of God for us rather than petitioning a God in order to take better care of us. And that's an important shift. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, so that was a powerful way of looking at it. And we recite that over and over and over and over again. But when Mm -hmm. when you don't, when you think we change how you see it, it's, um, 
Yeah, definitely. So you mentioned that in the description there's a, a, a lottery winner, a man that wins the lottery or a scratch-offs like twice in a two-week period. So it, mm-hmm. it's interesting. What what do you think is happening with these people with the CD? It's just changing how they think about themselves or their their thought and, process. And changing their thinking, but also their very much their energy. So many people, I thought, you know, it's designed you could listen to this Liquid Lux CD and then uh, call it to mind before you're going to a job interview or a uh, first date or and to get a lottery ticket or what have you. But found many people are listening to it daily because it makes them feel so good if they listen to it in the morning when they get up or even before bed. They sleep really well and then have a good day the next day. So because it's creating such good feeling for people, um, you know that feeling component is really important to your timing, serendipity, and trust when you get that idea, oh, I'm going to stop at this particular store. I usually don't stop at to get the lottery ticket. And, uh, you know, and then you you might um, talk to the um, owner like you were mentioning when you go into a store and you're a little distracted and then out of the corner of your eye, one of those tickets on the scratch tickets kind of glows. And you get that one and it's a winner. And, um, it's a very different ticket than you would have selected if you just went about things the way they usually would do. Um, there's this room for this dance of magic. And I think the CD and the book get people in touch with that ability um, to let the universe dance some magic for them. Yeah. So what we got about probably eight minutes left in the show here. So what is what are some new... What is new for you going on? Is there a new book or uh, a new program coming um, out? Or? After Liquid Lux CD came out, I, I did uh, wanted to look at, um, I was trying to summarize two decades of experience, if you will, in manifesting into something somebody could use in a half hour and get a taste of this and see results. So Liquid Lux came out. Um, as that got popular, um, I looked at... Um, some other things that um, are very important in this area of creating your own reality, mainly this idea of having high energy. And when you're wanting to increase abundance, the first step is to see how abundant you already are, the abundance of pets in your life and books you've read and beauty of nature and hopefully friendships and health. And and so I did a CD called Abundance Waterfall. It's another meditation by an orbit exercise where you walk down a gentle path and then you see a waterfall, and that symbolizes all the abundance in your life. And then you can be there and increase different parts of the waterfall to correspond with increasing health, for example. might even sit in the waterfall if you'd like. And I've used that one, say, myself. I uh, uh, went to um, do a workshop after my brother John died this uh, spring. And uh, the workshop started the day after the funeral, so I was a little concerned how uh, my energy would be. It went really well. Um, It was was a beautiful death. I was there with him and his wife and my wife, kind of loving him as he passed. And after the workshop was over, I sat at a slot machine and just thought of my abundance waterfall around me. And I immediately hit a royal flush, which is about 160,000 to one by chance on that machine for $4,000 or so went to another machine and hit the, that its jackpot on the third pole and again the same jackpot on the fifth pole and then went to bed, got up the next morning and the first machine I hit I hit another jackpot. So abundance waterfall works pretty well uh, in my experience and many others. So that's out now. Um, looking at um, probably a meditation in the future about opening the heart because I mention that a lot and some folks have a need a little more explanation what I mean by that. Um, I may revise my book, Brothers Forever, that I published 20 years ago when my brother committed suicide because he was a trigger for me getting into all this abundance work and just uh, following what's gone on since uh, that time. So there are always projects, got uh, plans as part of that um, stereo story I didn't tell you with the speakers is the the fellow also would like me to go over to uh, Germany to do a workshop which I love because I love to travel. Um, So we keep busy. Jeremy, I don't know about your life, but uh, uh, 
that that's certainly true here. So we keep just uh, enjoying and and I love the creativity and getting new projects going. So we'll keep trucking. Yeah, it's really not work. It's really not work if you're uh, if you're enjoying it. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, yeah. Much of the stuff I do, I frankly would continue doing if I won the major lottery. I enjoy doing the Vegas Adventure Workshops. We've done over. I think about 72, 73 of those over the years now, uh, where people, you know, have that light go on um, about being manifestors. I enjoy my work up in Monroe, and uh, so um, I think uh, that's a great blessing when anybody in their life can say, uh, "I'm enjoying the heck out of what I'm doing." And, uh, and I think we we can get there, you know, but the concept has to be right. Um, I think maybe even on your other show I used the example, most people, hard, unpleasant work equals money. had a friend who, uh, looking for a job, no luck, said, what do you really want? He said, I'd like to work about two months a year in pretty weather. Um, and so we'll put that out in these meditative states we've been talking about. And he got a call from somebody sold him his business. He had an advertising boat at the beach, and the season was two months long and um, pretty weather. And by the end of the year, he had three boats and a Lexus, and it was working a two-month year. But most of us, we can't get there because we think hard and pleasant work equals money. And then we don't yeah. know how to apply the right energy. So, uh, you know, expand your concepts. Uh, it's This can be quite a bit heaven on earth more than we make it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, I just want to throw this out there to everybody. Um, remember, we can uh, you can Google search liquid luck, and uh, you can definitely find uh, Dr. Gallenberger's um, um, you know website. It, also, the comments down in the description uh, there is the, his website that was hyperlinked that you can actually go directly to his website and find out uh, everything about Dr. Gallenberger. I'm sure that he will be on the show again in the future, uh, and I'm looking forward to that. And I just want to thank everybody for listening. And Dr. Gallimer, as, as always, thank you. It's been a pleasure for you to have you on the show. My and pleasure, I Jeremy. Forward. I hope you have a wonderful weekend and everybody out there as well. Absolutely. Many blessings and have a, a great day. Thank you. Okay. And thank you, everybody, for listening. And we'll have our next – I'll be putting on Facebook recent, uh, soon our next guest, uh, which will be coming on next week at noon. So uh, thank you for listening to Soul Talk, and have a wonderful weekend.